Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello viewers, welcome to this next lecture on the NPTEL MOOC course on Mathematical Portfolio Theory. You would recall that in the last class we started talking about uh, the optimal portfolio in the case of a continuous time setup and we looked at the wealth equation wherein we consider a portfolio comprising of a stock with the stock following the geometric Brownian motion and uh, a bond. And based on that uh, wealth equation, uh, we talked about how we can optimize the expected utility of the final wealth level and this resulted in us getting the equivalent of the dynamic programming uh, in case of the continuous time setup namely the hamilton jacobi bellman equation so in today's class we'll continue our discussion on the hjb equation uh, and we begin with a couple of examples and then what we will do is that we'll move on to uh, the inclusion of the case where we also in addition to the wealth process must also consider uh, what is the consumption process and then we will look at uh, a description of that. So accordingly we begin this lecture uh, with this example. So here uh, let us consider that the utility function is uh, log x uh, that means natural log of x. And we assume that the solution to the HJB equation is of the form Vtx. Remember, the HJB equation involved the value function Vtx is equal to log of x plus some constant k into a capital T minus small t. Uh, so, that is for some constant. So, actually the constant is a k and here of course, we need the condition that v of t x is equal to log x uh, which obviously is satisfied because if you put uh, small t is equal to uh, capital T this term becomes 0 and you are only left with log of x. So, with the assumption of this form for the value function, therefore, we obtain that v of t that is partial derivative of v with respect to t, this is going to be minus k, v of x is going to be 1 over x and v x x is going to be minus 1 over x square. So, now recall that uh, what was the HJB equation? The HJB equation was v t minus theta square over 2 v x square over v x x plus r x v x is going to be equal to 0 subject to the condition that v t x is equal to log of x. So, now uh, what we do is that we can substitute this 3 evaluated expression in the HJB equation. So, substituting v t v x and uh, v x x in the h j b p d e, we get minus k minus theta square by 2 uh, 1 over x square divided by minus 1 over x square plus r x into 1 over x is equal to 0 which implies that my k is going to be equal to r plus theta square over 2. So, therefore, the optimal portfolio is given by pi of t and we indicate the optimal portfolio with a hat and this is you recollect was uh, theta over sigma into x of pi hat of t. 
or equivalently the optimal portfolio of wealth to be invested in the stock is a constant given by pi hat of t. So, this is the capital pi hat. So, this is little pi hat of t uh, that we have here divided by the wealth process under this little pi hat of t and this just turns out to be nothing but mu minus r over sigma square. Okay, uh, let us now consider another example. So, let the utility function uh, u x be 1 minus e raise to minus alpha x and uh, let us assume based on the form of the utility function the solution to the HJB PDE is of the form V T x is equal to 1 minus f of t instead e raise to minus g t into x. Uh, so, again we recall the A j b equation what was this? This was v t minus theta square over 2 v x square over v x x plus r x v x equal to 0 with v t x being equal to 1 minus e raise to minus alpha x. Okay, so, we can now evaluate uh, these values. So, after evaluating v t, v x and v x x, uh, we get uh, accordingly we will get e raise to minus g t of x uh, within bracket minus f prime of t. So, uh, this f prime of t will come from the uh, derivative uh, with respect to t. So, it is minus f prime of t plus f of t g prime of t into x plus we have half theta square f of t plus r g of t f of t is into x this is going to be equal to 0. Now, what you are going to do? So, obviously, this term is not going to be equal to 0. So, accordingly, I have this entire expression being equal to 0. So, what you can do now is uh, we will now look at the term which comprises of f prime. So, I have an f prime here and uh, f here. So, what we are going to do is that we are going to segregate these terms in uh, which only involve f or f prime that is the function f and then those which involve both f and g or f for g prime. So, these two are going to be collected together. So, one way of achieving that this is going to be equal to 0 is that this plus this are going to be 0 and this expression plus this expression is going to be 0. So, accordingly we get f prime of t minus half theta square f of t is going to be equal to 0 and for this along with this expression we will get a common factor of f t uh, which obviously cannot be 0 because in that case v of t x is just going to be a constant. So, accordingly we will have that our g prime of t from here plus r g of t is going to be equal to 0 from this term. Now, you observe that uh, both of them uh, these are first order ODEs or ordinary differential equation. So, now uh, what we do is uh, we need uh, in order to solve this first order ODEs we need some condition. So, that can be obtained from the fact that V of uh, T x is equal to 1 minus E raise to minus alpha x and we had assumed 
our uh, v little t of x is 1 minus f of t into e raised to minus g t of x. Uh, so, this is going to give us v capital T x is going to be 1 minus f of capital T e raised to minus g of capital T into x. So, what I do is that we equate both this expression and accordingly what we get uh, from both this expression is that uh, we have the boundary condition or the final condition r from here you get uh, so the ones will cancel out so this f of t is going to be equal to 1 and g of capital t is going to be equal to alpha uh, so then we can solve uh, this first order od is subject to this condition for f of t so the solution is f of t is equal to e raised to theta square into t minus t over 2 and then we can solve this equation for g with respect to this condition which gives us g of little t is alpha e raised to r of t minus t. So, this is obviously uh, going to end up uh, giving us what is v of t x. So, then using that we can obtain the optimal portfolio is pi hat of t x. Uh, remember that this was uh, minus theta over sigma v x of t x over v x x of t x. And if you replace the value, so you have find out the solution of v from here. So remember v is equal to 1 minus f of t into e raised to minus g t of x. So, you can calculate v x and v x x from here, you end up eventually with the form theta over alpha sigma into e raised to minus r t minus capital T. So, we now consider the case of the investor who derives utility from consumption also. So, this means that in addition to the wealth process, now the uh, consumption process also has to be taken into consideration. So, recall that for a continuous time setup, the consumption C is a non-negative adapted process. So, accordingly let the total uh, cumulative consumption be denoted by c of t which is integral of 0 to t c of u d u. So, now we are in a uh, position to state the problem. So, uh, the mixed uh, that means, it is a combination of uh, terminal wealth consumption, utility, maximization problem is given by. So, we will look at uh, what is going to be the utility of uh, the final wealth that is x of t and uh, the utility of uh, consumption and the integral of that from 0 to t of du and this utility of the wealth this is going to depend on pi and c 
And since this is a random variable, so obviously we need to calculate its conditional expectation E subscript T comma X and you take the supremum of this over the portfolio process pi and the consumption process C and this results in the value function which depends on time t and the wealth level at time t being equal to little x. So, supremum over pi c conditional expectation of u1 as well as integral of u2. Now, uh, this is subject to the wealth equation dx pi c is going to be rx pi c plus pi into mu minus r dt plus pi sigma dw. So, this is the expression for the wealth process without the consumption and along with it now we include a term for the consumption. Uh, so, you observe that uh, this was the change in the wealth level uh, without the consumption was given by this factor and then the change of the wealth level is also going to be affected by the consumption C uh, over the interval of dt which has to be subtracted. Uh, so, accordingly uh, you can show that for the case where you consider both wealth and consumption the HJB PDE is Vt plus supremum over pi c of half pi square sigma square v x x plus pi into mu minus r as before, but we have a new term minus c v x plus u 2 of c that is the utility function for the consumption plus r x v x is equal to 0 subject to the condition that v t x obviously is going to be u 1 of x. Okay, so, now we need to take the supremum of this expression here. So, uh, taking, so let me identify this expression as star. So, taking derivative of the expression star with respect to C, we get the following. So, there are only two terms comprising of C, this term and this term. So, we accordingly we take the derivative to in order to obtain the optimal consumption as C hat being equal to U2 prime inverse of Vx t x of t driven by the optimal portfolio pi hat and the optimal consumption c hat. Uh, so, here the notation, this inverse notation is nothing but the notation f inverse of f x is going to be equal to x. So, now it is time to uh, consider an example uh, to accommodate this consumption. So, again we use uh, the utility function to be the log utility. Uh, and the question that we want to address is what is going to be the optimal portfolio uh, and of course, what is the optimal consumption. Uh, so, here let v t x the value function be f of t plus g of t into log x. So, uh, maximizing the term u 2 of c minus c v x gives that c hat of t x is equal to i 2 of v x t x uh, where i 2 is the inverse function of u 2 Now, the HJB PDE uh, with this assumption for VTX, this reduces to F prime of T 
plus g prime of t log x plus theta square over 2 into g of t plus r g t minus log of g t plus log of x is going to be equal to 1. So, the equation for g t will then be what? It is going to be log of x. So, actually it is the equation I should say for log of x. That means, this term and uh, this term. So, this is going to be log of x into g prime of t plus 1 is equal to 0 with g of t equal to 1. Uh, so, hence the solution is g of t is going to be capital T minus small t plus 1. So, once you have got the value of g of t, you can replace it in this expression and then you can uh, one can solve for f of t, but that is not needed. I mean of course, you have to do this if you are trying to uh, calculate V, but we are trying to calculate what is the optimal portfolio and consumption. So, evaluation of F t is not required. So, therefore, the optimal portfolio is pi hat is equal to minus theta over sigma V x over V x x and this is theta over sigma into x and the optimal consumption is c hat of t x and remember that c hat of t x is going to be given by the inverse of u 2 prime. So, u 2 prime was 1 over x. So, the inverse of that is this is going to be 1 over v x into t x and this turns out to be equal to x over capital T minus small t plus 1. So, thus you have obtained the optimal portfolio as well as consumption in case of the log utility. So, we now come uh, to what is known as the duality or martingale approach to utility maximization. So, we uh, begin uh, this part uh, of the class with the discussion of the martingale approach to the single period binomial model uh, framework. So, as before let S 0, so we are considering a single period model. So, accordingly we say that let S 0 and S 1 denote the price of the stock at the beginning and end of the period 0 1. So, according to the binomial model, let S 1 have two values. So, we know that in the binomial model S 1 will have two values. So, let those values be S of u with probability p or s of d 
with probability 1 minus p. Uh, further, let R denote the single period return. Uh, so, just to note that uh, S D is less than S U and this must ally between uh, this must sandwich uh, 1 plus R into S 0. Uh, so, this means that if we invest an amount of S 0 in a risk free asset, it will go up to the value of S 0 into 1 plus R at time 1 and this must lie between the lower value of the stock S D at time 1 and the higher value of the stock S U at time 1. Now, recall that the wealth equation starting with the wealth level x 0 equal to x is given by. So, this wealth equation at t equal to 1 this is given by x of 1 and how do we get this? So, we start off with an amount of x and you buy delta naught stocks whose total cost is delta into s 0 and you invest this in a risk free asset. And, uh, this delta stock at time 1 it gets the value s of 1 into delta. So, that is the value of the delta number of stocks at time 1 and this is equal to x of 1. Now, this is like the terminal wealth. So, what we need to look at is that uh, so, uh, since x of 1 is the wealth at the terminal point t equal to 1. So, accordingly the expected utility of the terminal wealth is what is this? It is going to be the expected utility of the terminal wealth that is x of 1. This is going to be the utility of so x of 1 can take two values namely x u and x d. So, the corresponding utilities are going to be u of x u and u of x d and the respective probabilities are p and 1 minus p. So, the expected utility is going to be sum of these two. And what is the goal? So, the goal is to maximize the expected utility. Now, let us be more specific about what my x u and x d are going to be. So, what is going to be x u? x u is the wealth resulting from the stock going up to s u. So, x u is going to be delta into s u from this term plus of course, x minus delta s 0 into 1 plus r and uh, in an analogous manner x d is going to be delta s d plus x minus delta s 0 into 1 plus r. So, therefore, what is going to be the expected utility here? So, this is going to be, uh, so the expected utility at the terminal wealth now uh, in more precise term this is going to p into x u. So, I will replace this form of x u. So, it is the utility of delta s u plus x minus delta s 0 into 1 plus r plus 1 minus p into utility of this which is delta s d plus x minus delta s 0 into 1 plus r. And my goal is essentially to maximize this utility. So, accordingly taking the derivative of uh, let me call this double star Uh, with respect to delta and setting equal to 0, we obtain that p of u prime of x u into the derivative of x u. Uh, so, this is going to be uh, s u 
minus S 0 into 1 plus R plus 1 minus P u prime of x d into derivative of the argument which is S d minus S naught into 1 plus R and I set this to be equal to 0. So, uh, this expression or uh, rather this equation can be rewritten as the expected utility of u prime of x of 1 into s 1 minus s 0 into 1 plus r equal to 0. So, you see the random variable here is u prime of x u into this expression and u prime of x d into this expression. So, x 1 u prime of x 1 will be u prime of x u with probability p and u prime of x d with probability 1 minus p and s 1 minus s 0 into 1 plus r is going to be this expression with probability p and this expression of uh, with probability 1 minus p. So, if I consider this entire thing as a random variable these two random variables. So, with respective probabilities p and 1 minus p. So, this can be written in the compact form as the expected value of u prime of x 1 into s 1 minus s 0 into 1 plus r and this is going to be equal to 0. And then uh, which gives that so I can solve this for s 0 and this is going to be expected utility of u prime of x hat of 1 and I am using here x hat uh, because this is an optimized value over expected utility uh, expected value of u prime of x hat of 1 into s 1 over 1 plus r. Uh, so, here uh, the notation that you have used here x hat of 1. So, this notation x set of 1 is the optimal terminal wealth for the investor. So, we now uh, introduce the notation and we will call this expression here let us call this since this depends on time 1 let us call this some z of 1 and this is defined as u prime of x hat of 1 over expected value of u prime of x hat of 1. Uh, so, this implies that if we take the expectation the numerator and denominator will become identical. So, the expected value of z 1 this is going to be equal to 1. So, uh, using the this notation uh, that is z 1 we get. So, this will result in this value of s 0 being written as the expected value of z 1 over 1 plus r into s 1. Now, see z of 1 is u prime of x set of 1. So, obviously, this is a random variable. Uh, so, this random variable z 1 is referred to as the change of measure and you will soon be clear why we are calling this as change of measure. Uh, also, uh, this factor z 1 over 1 plus r is called the stochastic discount factor. Now, uh, the, I want to make an important observation. Uh, so, if you uh, look at option pricing, you will see how important this observation is and that uh, there is another interpretation of the formula uh, that is use of a new probability 
or change of probability measure. Uh, so, accordingly we will define p star to be is equal to p into u prime of x hat of u divided by the expected value of u prime of x hat of 1 and we define accordingly 1 minus p star this is going to be 1 minus p into u prime of x hat of d over expected uh, value of u prime of x hat of 1. Now, uh, here p star and 1 minus p star may be viewed as the new probabilities or what is known as risk neutral probabilities. of S u and S d. Uh, so, remember that earlier we had the probability p and 1 minus p and this will now be changed to p star and 1 minus p star. So, this and that is the reason why. So, since this is a change of the probability measure. So, that is the reason why we had referred to z 1 as the uh, as change of measure. So, uh, accordingly uh, we can write that then S 0 is equal to E of z1 over 1 plus r s1. This is one expression for s0 we had got, and this can then be so. This is one expression, and then we reconcile it with a previous expression, and it can be shown that that this is nothing but E star of s1 over 1 plus r. And here uh, we note that the notation E star denotes the expectation using the risk neutral probabilities. Uh, so, this expectation here makes use of the probability p and 1 minus p and this expectation here uses the probability p star and 1 minus p star. Uh, so, the reason why uh, you know these are called risk neutral probabilities is that you observe that here we have s 0 is equal to uh, e star s 1 over 1 plus r and this will give us that the expected value of s 1 is going to be s naught into 1 plus r. So, if we had invested an amount of S0 directly in a risk free asset, this would grow to S0, S0 into 1 plus R and this is going to be the same as the expected value of the stock price at 1 which is a random variable and since the expected stock price at uh, time t equal to 1 under p star and 1 minus p star become the same as that you obtain from a risk free asset. So, the probability which causes this to be equal namely p star and 1 minus p star accordingly uh, is called as the risk neutral probability. So, in general for a multi period model with r being the constant risk free rate for each period we obtain that s of t divided by 1 plus r raised to t is e t star of s of t that is s of capital T divided by 1 plus r raised to capital T. Uh, where uh, I, I have introduced this subscript T. So, here this notation E uh, star with subscript T is the conditional expectation 
conditioned on information available at time little t. Now, uh, if we introduce the notation m of t as s of t divided by 1 plus r raised to t, then m t, so from here we get m t is equal to e t star of m of capital T. And a, a process m t is a martingale if m t is equal to e t star of m of t. So, a martingale process is defined to be a process m t which satisfies this property and in particular if I choose my m t to be this expression, then the above expression here reduces to this definition of martingale and hence the discounter stock price process is a martingale. Uh, now, we observe that uh, z 1 can take two values. So, remember that uh, this depends on whether the stock goes up or down. So, accordingly depending on S u and S d we take it can take two values z u and z d with probability p and 1 minus p respectively. Now, uh, since expected value of z 1 is equal to 1, therefore, so by definition of z 1 this expectation is 1. So, therefore, p into z u, remember z u takes the value with probability p plus z d which takes the probability 1 minus p. So, it is 1 minus p into z t. So, the this is the expected value of z 1 and this is going to be equal to 1. Also, uh, if you observe carefully 1 plus r as 0 is going to be. So, I for this purpose I am going to uh, uh, make use of the fact that s 0 is expected value of z 1 over 1 plus r into, uh, uh, into s 1. So, s 1 can take two values. So, this becomes 1 plus r s 0. Uh, so, this is going to be z u into s u uh, and the other value would be. So, these are going to be the values of z 1 s 1. So, these are going to be z u s u or z d s d with respective probabilities p and 1 minus p. Okay. Uh, so, then uh, what we get is we now solve, solving for z u and z d we obtain that z u is equal to 1 over p into 1 plus r as 0 minus s d over s u minus s d and z d is equal to 1 over 1 minus p into s u minus 1 plus r s 0 into s u minus s d. So, uh, this brings us to the end of this lecture. Uh, just to do a recap of what we have done so far. So, we picked up from our uh, uh, formulation for the Hamilton Jacobi Bellman equation and then we looked at two examples to determine what is going to be our optimal portfolios. And then we moved on to the uh, situation where we include in addition to the wealth process, we take into account what is the consumption process. And then we stated the Hamilton Jacobi Bellman equation when both these processes are involved and you looked at one example. And then we moved on uh, to the case of the Martingale approach for portfolio optimization. And in today's class, we uh, set up what is going to be the background for that. And we also identified a very important concept 
uh, that is used in finance in general that is the notion of risk neutral probabilities. So, in the next class we will continue our discussion uh, and uh, we will look at how we can now make use of this martingale approach in order to determine what is going to be an optimal portfolio. Thank you for watching.